All right, today we are looking at eight five variation functions, okay? For whatever reason, okay? I really want you to pay attention to things today because on the upcoming quiz, these are the most commonly missed points and that shouldn't be the case, okay? Eight five should be very straightforward, but you guys, you can't let yourself get confused, okay? There's three types of variation we're going to look at. We're going to look at direct, joint, inverse, okay? So it's really important you keep all of those straight because what happens is when we get to the quiz, then we start to confuse ourselves when we see a bunch of letters, and then, then we go 0 for 4 on the easiest questions on the quiz, which is not a good situation, okay? So looking at the first two cases, direct and joint, these are very similar and related to each other, okay? Big thing to keep in mind, right? Joint variation is when both variables are increasing. So you can kind of think of this as a line that's going up to the right, okay? So something's increasing constantly, all right? Um, you can see it's always gonna be expressed as y equals kx or in terms of your constant of proportionality k, it would be y over x. So that's that's kind of the one thing to kind of really think about is getting that constant by itself. And if you see the quotient of variables, this is a situation where we have direct variation. Okay. So kind of looking here, we're going to go into example one. I'm just going to highlight these again. Okay, these are super important to keep straight. When the uh, constant is isolated, if you have a quotient, that's gonna be a situation of direct variation. So it's easiest to just get your constant by itself and then read what you have. If you have y over x, that's direct variation, okay? So all of these problems are gonna be kind of situated uh, very similarly, okay? I'm gonna give you information to start. So y varies directly as x. So you can kind of use this or you can use this. It doesn't matter. One solve for k, one solve for y. Either way, both of these situations are going to give you the same thing. I typically am going to use the second one. Y varies directly as x because when I read that y varies directly as x, I know that y equals k times x is what that situation means. Okay. So what you're going to do is figure out what your constant is. So I'm gonna plug in the information I know. All right, pretty straightforward. In this case, I can see that K, my constant is negative five, all right? After you figure out your constant, all right, it says find Y when X is eight. Well, I'm gonna use my constant and I'm gonna make a prediction about what Y is when X is eight. So I know that my new equation is y equals negative 5 times x. And I'm going to take my 8 and plug it in. Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. All right. Continuing on, joint variation is really similar to direct. However, there are more than just two variables. Typically, we're looking at a situation of three variables. All right. So again, very similar situation. Y varies directly as uh, X and Z. We get Y equals KXZ. If we wanted to solve for the constant, I'm going to show you how this one looks. We have the one variable on top, and then we have two on the bottom. Okay, so really important to kind of keep that in mind. When I get that constant by itself, if I have y over two variables, that's going to be a situation of joint variation. Okay, and then again, we're going to do uh, a very similar thing as before. So I read the problem and I want to set up my equation. Y varies jointly as x and z. Perfect. Set up your equation. It says find y when x is 2 and z is 8 if, 
So be, be mindful of these ones because sometimes they, they mix up the wording. So this is what I want to find. It says find y when x is 2 and z is 8. All right. If y is 70 when x is 10 and z is 4. So just kind of be mindful of those. Sometimes our textbook kind of words it in that awkward opposite way. Just be mindful of that as you go through things. Okay. So uh, if we look here, we have 40K on the left. So if I divide 70 by 40, K is going to be seven fourths. So I'm going to plug that into my equation. And then I have two times seven times eight divided by four. If you want to, you know, do that route, two goes into both, that would be fine as well. Seven times eight is 56, 56 divided by two is 28, all right? So again, this is uh, direct variation and joint variation, okay? Keep in mind those equations that I've starred Again, if you have a quotient of variables, that's going to be direct. If you have a quotient where there's two on the bottom, that's going to be joint. The third type of variation we're going to look at is inverse variation. Okay. This is the equation where we have the constant over a variable, or we can think of it like k equals xy. Okay, really important to keep this straight because that looks like direct variation, y equals kx. Okay, but keep in mind when the constant is isolated, if it's a quotient, that's direct. If it's a product, it's an inverse relationship. Okay, so kind of really keep this in mind. When I see that, I see inverse because if I brought the x over, I'd have k over x, which is an inverse relationship. And then we're just doing the same thing. Okay, exact same thing. So I see if A varies inversely as B, the most important thing is set up that equation. If A varies inversely as B, I'm going to get that equation set up. And A is 24 when B is 4. A is 24 when B is 4. I know that, whoops, not B, sorry. I know that K is 96. We can go back to our equation. Sorry, it's not Y. A equals 96 over uh, B. It says find A when B is 12. Well, 96 divided by 12 is 8. So again, all of these situations today are going to be working with direct joint and inverse you're going to want to set up your equation figure out what the constant of proportionality is then you're going to make a prediction about a final value okay the last example we're going to look at is combined combined variation is going to have some sort of you guessed it combination of joint direct and inverse all right again the most important uh, situation is to read and get your equation set up correctly. Keep in mind, there is only one constant for this entire situation. So when I see P varies directly as R, I'm immediately thinking P equals K times R. Okay. Then it says P varies inversely with T. Well, I recall before that inversely is K over T. I'm not going to have another K and do like K squared times r over t it's just that same constant used for both situations okay then what we want to do is figure out what our constant is and this is one of those ones where we we word it the opposite way which is really odd so we have k times r over t equals p we multiply both sides by 20 so we have 80 equals 2K. Then we divide by 2. And we get K is 40. 
after we get that, we'd want to go back to our equation. Sorry. So program to do y equals. So we plug in our constant r over t. Now we're going to make our prediction using those values. So r is 20, t, whoops, we're solving for t, p is negative 5. All right. We can flip-flop those. So t is going to be 40 times 20 over negative 5. 800 divided by 5 is negative 160. Sorry. Negative 160. All right. So again, most important thing is being able to, uh, or the most important thing today is being able to set up and identify direct joint, inverse, and cases of combined variation, okay? Um, so just really keep in mind those situations. We'll obviously do some review with those before your upcoming quiz, but these are really easy points on the quiz, and for whatever reason every year, people always mess it up, and it's really annoying. So let's keep direct, joint, inverse, and combined variation straight and it will make your life a whole heck of a lot easier. And actually, in that regard, this is a case of combined variation. I want to show you what happens when we get k by itself. If I multiply both sides by t and then divide by r, this is what combined variation looks like. Okay? So I want you to look at that. And then I want to go back to the joint variation for a second. Okay. Please note the difference between the two. When you have two variables on the bottom, that's a case of joint variation. When we have two variables on top, that's a case of combined variation. And remember, we can think about things before. When we had this situation with the constant isolated, that's direct. When we have this situation, that's a case of inverse variation. So I have direct and inverse. So this is going to be a case of combined variation. Homework's on the bottom. Please let me know if you have any questions on things. Hopefully today goes pretty easy or pretty well, and hopefully it's a nice break from, from yesterday's graphing assignment.